The next step is to deploy the Kylin query cluster. Deploy the query cluster using the deploy command. To deploy the query cluster, run the following command. You just need to change the mode from build to query when you want to create a query cluster. Prior to executing the deploy command, the configuration file needs to be modified to include the following. Turn on the MDX for Kylin. Because in the query cluster, we need to use MDX for Kylin. To define the business metrics, enable MDX as false to true. Then execute the command to deploy the query cluster to the target cluster. Then, the deployment starts. Compared to the first deployment when building the cluster, since we don't need. Do another upload and download of this file. We just need to download some files that have not been downloaded before, so the speed will be much faster. As you can see, we have uploaded these files before, they can all be skipped. Okay, now our query cluster has been deployed successfully. And then again we look at our node info. After getting the node infer, we can use the public IP of the Kylin node to log into our Kylin node's web. Then use the admin user with the username and password. You can see, the metadata is now the same as when the build cluster was destroyed. Both cubes are currently in the ready state. Now we can go inside Kylin and execute the query.
Now let us run the query we ran earlier in Spark SQL. Let's run it in Kylan as well. You can see. We now have this query taking only 6.8 seconds to return the query results. The previous execution in Spark SQL took about 120 seconds. Here you can see that by per-computing, query performance is improved exponentially. When comparing query performance between Spark SQL and Kylan, the dataset we use is the New York City taxi order data. The fact sheet has a total of 200 million plus data. As you can see from the comparison results, in a big data analysis scenario with hundreds of millions of data, Kylan can significantly improve query efficiency, accelerate thousands of queries with a single build, then dramatically reduce query costs. Then we start to do the next step of the data analysis. The next step is use MDX for Kylan to import our pre-designed dataset. MDX for Kylan is on port 7080 on the Kylan node. Again, using the admin user to log in with the username and password. After logging in too, first, you will need to confirm your connection to Kylan. After we enter the username and password for the Kylan node. You can see this screen. This shows us the Kylan node we are connected to. This node is in a running state. We now exit administrative mode. The projects. Cube information is synchronized with the Kylan. So here we only need to use the project COVID underscore trip. Then go here and import a dataset. The dataset is then imported into the interface. It can be installed on your local machine. Select a GIN file to import. The GIN file of this dataset we have is ready on top of S3. You use this command to download to your local machine. Let's download it here. OK, we've successfully downloaded it here. It's saved in my local directory. Then I can go there and select the file that I just downloaded to import into my project. Let's open this file and parse it. You can see that the parsing is successful here. Then then go to import. So it's already imported successfully, and it's in a normal state. Then let's look at what is defined in this dataset. First of all, in this relationship, we are putting the two cubes in Kylan, which are associated with the dimension table like look underscore up underscore calendar. Then after associating with them, you can analysis between the two of them to do correlation analysis. Here are some metrics for the semantic layer. Here is the definition of our previously defined design business metrics. It's all here. Defined and calculated measures. For example, incidence rate and death rate of COVID-19, and a monthly increase in the number of deaths. And then there are semi-cumulative metric sum for the definition of the number of deaths. This is a semi-measure of the number of confirmed diagnoses. Semi-cumulative measure means in the time dimension not cumulative, but in all the other dimensions it is cumulative. Here MDX for Kylan also supports the definition of the semi-accumulative metrics. And then in addition to that, there are defined hierarchical dimensions. That is, they are hierarchical dimensions. On designing the hierarchical dimensions, for example, the hierarchical dimension above the region including continent name, and then further down, country names and provinces. Then to the county, when we are analyzing with this hierarchical dimension, 
It is easy to up scroll down drill, then you can expand some dimensions to see. Next level of more granularity in aggregated data. Except for this regional hierarchy. We also have time hierarchies including the year, month, and day. We can all do it for convenience. Easily analyze the upper roll down drill. The translation here is possible to add. Translation of a language for some global corporations. For analysts from different regions. You can also add their native languages. As a result, anyone can perform the analysis easily. Okay, this data set mostly defines the items listed above. The next stage is to analyze on top of our local buy tool. We start with our Tableau to connect to Kylin with the MDX for Kylin to do data analysis. Activate local windows. On the machine, the Tableau is already installed. Then select Microsoft Analysis Service to connect to MDX for Kylin. Here the Earl of the server. It is the Earl of our MDX for Kylin. It includes the IP port, and the information about the project we need to connect to. Here we put this IP replaced with public IP of the IP2 machine on the Kylin node. Then use the admin user, username and password as login credentials. Then here it loads up. COVID underscore trip project below the dataset. Select this dataset. Then you can see the dataset which contains information about the fields. Now we can create the worksheet to take advantage of this dataset to perform data analysis. First, let's analyze the COVID-19 data. Number of people diagnosed through two indicators of morbidity and mortality to map out breaks at the national level, as we have already in the dataset of MDX for Kylin. Business metrics are defined uniformly, so when creating data analysis reports in Tableau, just drag and drop the defined business metrics to the worksheet for presentation and you're done. First we put the region hierarchy, the following field of country underscore short underscore name, drag and drop into the rows of the worksheet, which is the name of the country. Then take the two indicators that we need to analyze. Total number of new diagnoses some underscore new underscore positive underscore cases displayed as a map. There is also an indicator for the COVID-19 morbidity and mortality indicators are placed in the worksheets rows. Shades of color represent the level of morbidity and mortality. Good. Then you can now see that it has shown worldwide data for COVID-19. The changes will be more visible. Then look at this. The area reflects the total number of people who have been diagnosed. Number of people level. Then the color shades represent the level of morbidity and mortality respectively. Larger area means more diagnosed people. The higher the mortality, the deeper the color. The two points with the largest area can be seen. The United States is one, while India is the other. In these two countries, the number of verified diagnoses is the highest. However, the mortality rates in these two countries' shades of color, compared to the majority of other nations, does not produce a meaningful change. Rather, we see, the darker points in the map are Vanuatu, Yemen, and Peru, both very small countries. They have a small number of confirmed instances. However, in the statistics presented, demonstrates a high mortality rate. It is possible that here there are some pathology-related reasons. You can dig into it. And then since we set up the region hierarchy, you can drill down to the outbreak area at the country level. To provincial scale, view the map by country and region. COVID-19 status, select here. Drill down to the province level.
Then, at a finer granularity level, you can see the status of the COVID-19 within the country. We can zoom in and look at the U.S. region. This will be shown as a label. You can see. Mortality rates in the United States by state. These color shades. Is actually no particular difference. In terms of the number of people diagnosed in California. Texas. New York. And Florida. are significantly higher than other area, probably because these areas in the United States are densely populated, economically developed areas, and then the confirmed number of people in COVID-19 will also rise. Then after analyzing this COVID-19 data below, we target the New York City taxi data set, combined with the COVID-19 development, analyze the change in data on taxi passengers under COVID-19. Let's create a new worksheet to do data analysis of New York City taxi orders for the taxi order dataset in New York City. Start with the following two business problems, respectively, to analyze average miles traveled before and after COVID-19 and changes in taxi travel habits of residents. In the time hierarchy, specify the month star, drag and drop into the worksheet's rows, and then the metrics that we need to analyze, trip mean distance and Average distance people travel by taxi, drag and drop them into the worksheets column. Then a bar chart is created. According to the results of the bar chart, we can find before and after COVID-19. People's habit of traveling by taxi has a significant change. From March 2020, miles travel begin to rise. In April and May of 2020, growth has become more significant, even exponential. And after the start of COVID-19, for each month, average miles traveled by taxi becoming unstable. Based on this data, we can combine the month dimension in the COVID-19 data for joint analysis, combining our total number of new confirmed diagnoses. Drag and drop it to the worksheet for analysis together. And the monthly cumulative value of the number of taxi orders in the COVID-19 data. due to the taxi order data set is for New York City. So COVID-19 data should also be analyzed for the corresponding data for NYC. Add a filter here, select New York City. Check here. Then filter out the COVID-19 data for New York City. Here you can see, in the middle is the addition of COVID-19 data. The first is the average distance traveled by people. The last one is the monthly cumulative value of the number of orders. A fascinating phenomenon can be seen here. COVID-19 in the early stages of the outbreak, the number of taxi orders was drastically reduced. But miles traveled increased. It means that people have reduced a lot of unnecessary short trips by taxi, or a safer mode of transportation other than a taxi is used for short distances. When these three data sets curve changes are compared, you can also see the COVID-19 severity, and people's travel habits showed a high correlation. COVID-19 when severe, the number of taxi orders will decrease, the average mileage then climbs, then COVID-19 turns for the better, taxi orders increase. Average mileage falls back. Between them, they showed a relatively large correlation 019, 25,700, greater than 019, 27,366. After analyzing COVID-19 before and after, New York City taxi order change in trips affected by COVID-19. Let's go back and analyze the second business problem. Analyze the travel characteristics of each block in New York City. Compared to the number of orders, we see travel speed and other travel indicators. Let's create a new worksheet. In this worksheet, let's start with the dimension of the departure block. 
number of orders and average speed of trips. We take the departure block dimension table of the block fields, drag and drop into the columns of the worksheet. Then the two metrics that we want to analyze, number of orders, average speed of trips. Drag and drop to the line, then show it as a map. Adjust the map so that we can see clearly. And then in this map, we can see the size of the area here represents the number of orders. The color shade represents the average speed. The darker the color, the higher the average speed. The larger the area, the higher the number of orders. In this graph, we can clearly see that number of orders in the Manhattan block compared to the other blocks, it is the highest. Manhattan is higher than all other blocks. The number of orders adds up to a higher total number. This also matches the Manhattan block of New York City is New York City's busiest block. But its average speed is the smallest. This is also very reasonable. Because it's more densely populated, so the speed of the taxi is smaller. The least number of orders is Staten Island. This block is isolated. So, the number of taxi orders is smaller. And then the highest travel speed is the Bronx. This block, its travel speed, up to 82 miles per hour ca. 132 kmh. And for the Manhattan block, the average speed is only 9 miles per hour ca. 14 kmh. Then we'll create a new worksheet. Go from the dimension of the arrival block. Check out the characteristics of the arrival of each block. In this worksheet, we go from the top of the dimension of the arrival block to count the number of orders in the average speed block field in the drop-off underscore New York underscore zone table. Drag and drop to the column in the worksheet. The same, taking the two metrics we need to count. Order count and the average speed of travel. Drag and drop into the column of the worksheet, then show it as a map. Resize it a bit. Then here we can see, compared to the number of orders in the departure block, in terms of proportional relationship, orders arriving in the Manhattan is less than the orders from Manhattan block than the other two blocks. The most noticeable change is in Queens and Brooklyn. Here you can see that actually in the number of blocks of departure, Queens is much larger than Brooklyn, but on the arrival block, they are about the same. What's more, Staten Island and the Bronx. Their number of both departures and arrivals. Both are small. Relatively speaking in Bronx, the arrivals is more than the departure orders. The analysis of the travel characteristics of each block in New York City is over. Next we use Excel to connect to MDX for Kylan to performing data analysis. First, open the Excel that is already installed on our local machine. Then create a new worksheet. We go through the data and create a worksheet with MDX for the Kylan connection. Get data from database from analysis service. And the server name here is the same as the one we used before in the Tableau. To connect to MDX for Kylan in is the same, also available in PowerPoint. Let's copy it here. Put this. Replace public underscore it with ec2 node of Kylan for the real public underscore it. Then the username and password of the admin user used.
Here you can see that we have connected to MDX for Kylan and got its dataset information. Here the connection is complete. We create a pivot table based on this connection. Then on this pivot table, do the next data analysis. From here we can see that all the fields of the dataset in MDX for Kylan have been loaded. Here, you can see the connection to MDX for Kylan in Excel and in Tableau. The data information obtained is the same, regardless of whether the analyst is in Tableau or Excel. Analysts all in a consistent data model, based on consistent dimensions and consistent business metrics, so uniform semantics can be achieved in Tableau for both COVID-19 and New York underscore trip underscore data datasets. Perform COVID-19 map plotting and trend analysis in Excel. For the same dataset and data scenario, we can view more detailed data. First for the COVID-19 map, we also go through indicators of death rate and the total number of diagnoses. Go to their specific count numbers. Select for pivot table. Dimension of region underscore hierarchy. Then check the two indicators we need to analyze. One is the total number of diagnoses. The other is the death rate. Then here you can see, here is the worldwide continental level. Total number of diagnoses cases and death rates. The highest number of diagnoses can be seen in Europe. And then the highest death rate is in Africa, reaching 0.02 million death rates. Then in this pivot table, it is easy to drill down to the lower region level. Go to the finer granularity of the breakdown. For example, let's look at the COVID-19 data for Asian countries. Expand this row for Asia. And then here it goes. List all number of confirmed diagnoses in Asian countries and death rates. We have a number of diagnoses for this. This Asian country is sorted by the display. Then here you can see the Asian country's number of confirmed diagnoses. The top three countries with the highest number of cases are India, Turkey and Iran. But their morbidity and mortality rates compared to other countries are not much higher. And then for the NYC taxi order data, for the outbreak, question on whether there's a noticeable difference in the number of taxi orders. First from the year dimension, view the annual accumulation of the number of taxi orders and annual growth rate. We choose the time horizon dimension. After that, look at the annual cumulative and annual growth rates. This is on top of the number of taxi orders and annual cumulative and annual growth rate. Because our data begins in the year 2019, we can ignore the data from January 2018 to July 2021. You can filter out the information we don't require. Then we can see from here that YOI from the year of the outbreak in 2020, that is, its annual growth rate is minus 0.70. The annual growth rate in 2019 is minus 0.17. This implies the COVID-19 outbreak resulted in a dramatic decrease in the number of taxi orders. Approximately 70% of travel orders were reduced by 2021, still be growing at a negative rate. However, when compared to the orders placed at the start of the epidemic in 2020, the rate of reduction has significantly slowed. Expand our time hierarchy. For example, the span 2020. 
then here is where it will first expand to the quarterly level time hierarchy and then continue with the expansion on top of the month level indicators we can also add in additional monthly cumulative value and monthly growth rate of the number of orders then we can add the number of orders in month level to see each month growth rate of the number of taxi orders and the number of orders and then we expand on the second quarter of 2020 for each month's statistics actually from the first quarter of 2020 which is march 2020 can already be seen the monthly growth rate has already shown a significant decrease from february was minus 0.01 directly to march 2020 the growth rate has reached minus 0.52 then in april 2020 it reached minus 0.92 that's a 92 percent reduction in orders the later period is actually growing slowly but in terms of the number of orders is also much lower than the number before the epidemic here we can see that the impact of the COVID-19 outbreak on New York City's number of taxi orders is very significant. We can also go to MDX for Kylan using the Java connection. Doing data analysis. Except for business by tools like Excel and Tableau, many companies internal will develop their own data analytics platform. On top of such self-developed data analytics platforms, user can still call the API to use the Kylan and MDX for Kylan as the base for the analysis platform to ensure uniform data caliber and use for computing to speed up data queries in this demo we will show you how to use a loop4j to send queries to mdx for kylan to get analysis results a loop4j is similar to jdbc driver is a java library that can access any loop service we provide a simple demo here which is easy for users to test directly. Its source code is located in our Apache Kylan repository on GitHub in branch MDX query demo. And then here we've built it into a jar package and put this jar on S3 as public directory directly. Then we download from this directory. To download this package locally, then if you have a local environment with JDK8, you can go ahead and run the jar package directly. Let's unpack this package first. It includes our jar package and the loop4j related dependencies. By running this Java command, you can go ahead and run this directly. This MDX query demo application has two parameters necessary. The first is the Kylan node's public IP address. In our scenario, it is referring to the IP of the MDX. MDX is installed with Kylan. So here is the Kylan node's public IP address. Then there's another MDX query you'd like to run. Without the MDX query parameter, the following query will be executed. The query is on top of the dimension of the departure block. To count the number of orders and average miles traveled, then we now execute this default query directly. Replace this public IP with our real IP of the Kylan node. Then now you can see that after running this query on the command line, we can observe that the query result after simple processing. The result of this data shows the number of taxi orders starting from Manhattan is the highest. However, the average distance traveled by its orders is only approximately 2.4 miles. Ka. 
4 km, which may consist of Manhattan's small geographic area and dense population, and the average mileage of orders from the Bronx, reached 33 miles ca. 53 km, which is significantly higher than any other neighborhood, probably due to the isolation of the Bronx, then do the same as with Tableau and Excel. In the demo, we write this MDX statement. Furthermore, you can use the business metrics which we have created before in MDX for Kylan, including the total number of orders and average miles traveled. So, within a company's own data analysis platform, users can also benefit from business metrics in MDX for Kylan. And for the data returned by the query, the results can further be analyzed and displayed. Then reports can be generated according to the presentation requirements. With the above three different data analysis connected to Kylan, and analysis data using MDX for Kylan, we can find, based on the Kylan multidimensional database, and the MDX for Kylan semantic layer functionality, in business scenarios, users, no matter what way they use, can use the same data model and business metrics, the data caliber of all data is the same, now that our data analysis is completed, after the data analysis is finished, we can then proceed to the destruction, of our Kylan query cluster, this time we use the destory all command to destroy it because this is the environment for our demo. Its metadata will not be used again. So we use destory all. Unlike destroy, the destory all will destroy both RDS nodes, monitoring nodes and VPC nodes. There will not be any resource residuals. And now let's go and execute this command. If you still want to use this metadata, you can use destory command to preserve metadata. Okay now our cluster has been successfully destroyed, then we go to the AWS interface, and have look at our nodes. We can also go to the AWS CloudFormation service to see the stacks. The stacks we started with the deployment tool, are both start with Ec2. Here you can see, all stacks starting with Ec2, have been destroyed, including our DS stack, and VPC is stack in the stack of the monitor node, so using destory all is going to destroy all the stacks. In addition, our previous configuration file of deployment tools, which is an S3 working directory, is not actively deleted using destory all command. If user wants to delete this S3 working directory, included the uploaded jar packages in the working directory of Kylan, you can go inside the S3 service, manually delete this directory. Here we go this time on how to quickly build on the cloud, based on Apache Kylan, data analysis platform demo sharing, it's all over, according to this demo tutorial, user only needs to prepare an AWS account, to use the on-cloud deployment tool, with Kylan's for computing techniques and multidimensional models, and the underlying metrics management capabilities of MDX for Kylan, quick and easy, to build Kylan Plus and DX for Kylan based, with data analytics platform on the cloud, docking various by tools for technical validation, achieving cost savings and efficiency, and the goal of unifying data caliber. If you want to know more about Apache Kylan deployment tools on the cloud, and the MDX for Kylan documentation and technical blog, follow these links to learn more and discover it, including the official Kylan website, on cloud deployment tool docs. MDX for Kylan's technical blog, and our MDX for Kylan user manual. 
when you use the products listed above. Encountering any problems, you can contact us via the following methods. Sending mail using Apache Kylan's mail group. To describe the problem you are experiencing, mail groups must be subscribed to before they may be used. You can use the method described in the link to subscribe. Alternatively, you can file at your issue to provide input on your problem. Here separately provide Apache Kylan's and the MDX for Kylan's issue list. And, you can follow the Weshit official accounts of Apache Kylan. Any questions can be asked by leaving a message in the background. Thank you for your time. If you're interested in the information presented in this video, just come along and try it out.